All right, before we talk about the movie, I want to, I want to go back in time to an ancient place. Some of you probably never heard of before. Uh, an old, old ancient kingdom called Sun Kills Video. I was a little hell spawn. But when I see this image, this old VHS, well, you knew then, this new VHS with this crazy cover art, and it was just called The Mummy. I begged my mom for this tape. I'm not sure if I thought it was going to be like the Scooby-Doo episode, but I just had to have it. And to make a long story short, I constantly wore the tape out so much. Like I watched this movie so many times, back again, back again, back again, that my mom was forced to buy several copies because I had to have a version of the mummy in the house. <laughs> All right, let's just talk about, let's talk about the good things about the movie, the positives. Karloff. It's very easy to say that Karloff's presence just enhances the film. His, whenever he just on screen, and the movie just comes hypnotized with him. And I mean, he's not even the mummy that much. The cold open with the mummy in the background was great. The look of it is so aw, odd, old, ominous. Fantastic makeup design by the legendary Jack Pierce. The fact that we barely see Karloff in the wrappings, that we never see him walk around as the mummy, is both a fascinating and frustrating choice because the makeup is just so darn good, so darn good. Most of them, he's this more human looking character, an alias called Ardeth Bay, but he never loses his power or intimidation. The character has this sadness to him, a longing. You feel more sorry for him than scared of him at times, at least I do. Zita Johan plays Helen, the reincarnation of the Princess Anaxanamen, Himotep's lost love. I really, really love the chemistry between Johan and Karloff. Whenever her ancient personality takes over, you can buy them as ancient loves. Her stare next to his is just so haunting. You can tell whenever she's with him, next to him, that he's feeling something, a missing piece she did not know that was there. Unlike most of the classic monsters that were based on books, the mummy was based on the discovery of King Tut and the supposed curse that basically killed, I think, most of the people who um, unearthed the tomb. And some say it was just all coincidences. Well, if you believe in such a thing. Though the story does share a lot of similarities with Dracula. Both are undead. They both come from foreign lands. They both have mind powers and they want to convert the main lady into their bride. Ever Von Sloan, who plays Dr. Muller, also played Professor Van Helsing in Dracula, another connection between the two films. One of the best scenes in the film is when Imhotep shows her, Helen her death and how he was mummified alive. And this scene is just is so great, it's so haunting. Like I like how you you go into the water and the image of the past slowly builds up and the moving statues, which I would freak me out as a kid. And when we actually get to see Imhotep being wrapped up in the band, just it looks so painful, so haunting. And when they bury him too, it's was again kind of creepy, <laughs> especially when uh, little old me watched it because we got this not really gruesome but still imp impaling scene, which. I'm pretty sure it was um, very shocking back in the 1930s. I mean, it's a pretty simple effect nowadays, but I can only imagine what people thought of it back then. My only real negatives with the film is one, the love interest, um, David Munners. I think I pronounced that. David Munners is Frank, Helen's main interest. And while they have great chemistry, they really do bounce off each other pretty well. It just, it just runs in so fast. It just goes so fast. And it doesn't feel well written. It feels more like, oh, we have a guy, we have a girl. Of course, we have to end up together. And 
the actors play well with it, it's just, it's not that well written. And the second um, thing that kind of bothers me is the ending. After the mummy dies, when Helen might or might not come back to consciousness, the movie just ends. Like, super quickly. Even, even, even kid me thought something was up, like maybe I got a bad version of the film or something. A sad part of this film is the production and the negative relationship between Zita Johan and director Karl Freund. Uh, Freund. The two seemed to either hate or were really antagonistic to each other on set, constantly pushing the other and prodding and from what I would tell through the um, behind the scenes features. Uh, there's one part of the film where Helen or Zita Jones had to shoot a scene or at least like a small segment or whatever with lions like real live lions she had to shoot that and it was cut yeah so the scene where Imhotep shows him shows Helen how he was mummified he also shows Helen all her previous lives um I think it was her as a Viking, her as a as a Jew as, as a Jew during um, the crucifixion, her as a Roman, her during the Salem witch trials. I think I make I think I made the last part up. I can't remember <laughs> going off the top of my head here. And they liked the scenes from what I can tell, but the producers or the director thought it took too much away from Helen and Imhotep and. It just felt like, they, felt like they thought it felt it dragged, so they cut it. And you gotta remember, this was just when movies were just movies. You got to go to the theater to see them. I mean, if you had a projector, maybe you could do something, but there was no home videos. There was, there was no VHSs. That wouldn't come for another, I'm going off the top of my head here, like 40 years. So, yeah, when those scenes were cut out of the film, they were just cut out of the film and probably just thrown away we have some pictures of what those scenes would have been but that's just it they're lost to time and we'll never see that again which is sad because they sound really awesome also i just had to notice though very much of a lack of a score in this movie i mean they play swan lake at the beginning which another reference to dracula and our connection to dracula and there's some music here and there but the music is very very spare and it helps create a sense of dread and a, and realism i think i think yeah it's because it's because i remember was it two or three years ago they did a re-release of this in theaters as they played it along with another movie i think it was the um, phantom of the opera and when i was watching the movie it just felt kind of weird and different, like they changed it. And when I went back to look at my copies, or just the, the scenes online, because I didn't have a current copy back then, I noticed that they added in all this extra music. And it wasn't bad music, it was creepy music, it was epic music, but it didn't fit the scenes. And those scenes just work so much better when they're silent especially the opening when he's reading from the scroll of thoth and himotep slowly comes to life because in the re-release they added in this epic creepy music but in the original is almost completely silent and it's just it is for a little kid me it was creepy it was awe awe-inspiring and here it's just uncomfortable uncomfortable because you see this dead thing slowly open his eyes, his body slowly coming back to life, and it, it just eerie. I remember all these VHSs. <laughs> uh, whenever you pop them in, they would have a commercial for it, basically advertising all the Universal Monster classics. That was enough to encourage me to buy them all. <laughs> this was the first step down the rabbit hole of gods and monsters for your Hanyo. And I did collect majority of these movies when I was growing up. I kind of stopped here and there. I finally got the full collection on Blu-ray and it is, it is beautiful. This is, this thing is so amazing. This is sexy. This is, this is perfection right here. 
right now. <laughs> but yeah, The Mummy, 1932 is one of my favorite films of all time. It is creepy, it is eerie, a Boris Karloff performance, it's just captivating. Zeta Johan is great, great. It's, it's perfect. Everybody else is serviceable, serviceable. They don't give a bad performance, but these two just steal the park whenever they're on screen. The look of the film, the cinematography is great. The ancient Egyptian sets that they design look perfect. Like everything, perfection, at least for me. I think, I think this movie is one of the greats of all time. And it's sad to say that we will, this will be the last time we you will see Imhotep for a while. Well, yes, their Universal did do other mummy movies. They did not star Imhotep, but another mummy called Karis. And we will start his journey, his saga, in the next video. So see you all there tomorrow. Bye bye. Two cups. Beat them up. Beat them up. Beat them up. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, you're, you're still here. You're actually still here at, at the end of the video. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised. Th thank you. Thank you for. Thank you for staying for the whole thing. If you have a few more seconds of your time, if I could, can you scroll down to that description, hit that little button that takes you over to my Twitch. I stream there almost every day. We play horror games, action games, and visual novels. So, if you if you don't mind, if you like what I do here, if you can stand in my annoying voice here. Follow me on Twitch and we can spend hanging out some more. Alright, hope to see you over there. Have a good day.